Welcome everybody to the Interprofessional Education and uh, COVID-19 Response. I'm grateful to be presenting with Dr. Dale Brassler, the Chief COVID Officer, and Margaret Robinson, the Associate Director of the Office of Interdisciplinary Programs, and I'm Aaron Wendelbo, uh, an Associate Professor of Epidemiology in the Hudson College of Public Health. What we'd like to do is cover three phases of interprofessional education in action. We'll start off with an overview of how we had our interprofessional students volunteer at uh, the Oklahoma State Department of Health. And then uh, Margaret Robinson will discuss how we adjusted the type of programs that we run to uh, meet the needs of our students, the faculty, and the response during the uh, pandemic. And then we'll turn the time over to Dr. Bressler to talk about the amazing work that um, all the students have done in running the vaccination clinics against COVID. So early on in the pandemic, we realized that we would need what's called surge capacity because you know, uh, in collaborating with the Oklahoma State Department of Health over the past 12 years, and even in my time uh, previously in New Mexico and with CDC, we understand that day-to-day -day operations, uh, public health staff, are already pretty overworked. But once you get into a pandemic or an epidemic, you need the surge capacity. And so fortunately, we actually uh, have some underlying agreements in place with the Oklahoma State Department of Health, with the Oklahoma City County Health Department, so that uh, our students, uh, of course, uh, with my background in public health and epidemiology, but we do that with the whole campus, as far as being able then to lend uh, our expertise to the needed response. And so in January, as we were learning more and more about the threat of COVID-19, we reached out to the state health department to ask what their needs were and to offer the expertise of our interdisciplinary team. And uh, one of the things that the health department discussed was the need to um, man or have personnel staff a phone bank because the health department was getting so many questions and phone calls. And uh, so we created some training. They, uh, each student before they uh, were able to respond, they needed to get some training. And so we had over 900 students complete this online training. And then over 200 students actually volunteered for one or more uh, call center slots at the Oklahoma State Department of Health. And this was really an interesting collaboration between um, the OKMRC, which is the Medical Reserve Corps, again, the State Health Department, OU Health, uh, both the clinical side and the academic side, and uh, then of course the Health Sciences Campus. I'll visit here with the group uh, regarding how our programming progressed after that. So many of our students were so eager to get back on the front lines. And then as we moved into the new academic year, we really had to pivot quickly and figure out, could IPE still be delivered without the team being together? And how could we do that? And that's where our collaborators across campus were so good to think outside of the box and to use technology to figure out what can we still do? So our big event, All Professions Day, that's where we bring first year learners together. And we traditionally do that in a convention style where they're all seated at a round table of eight to 10 learners with a faculty facilitator. And how can we move that into the virtual uh, environment to still deliver that? And so we pushed the date back and we worked really hard with our academic technology folks to figure out what could Zoom do to deliver that. We were able to provide both activities, all professions day one and two in that virtual environment. And we actually had really great reviews from both our students and facilitators. Uh, and then we were able to use what we learned there, those lessons learned, to move our simulation online and through the work of our IP simulation manager, Katrina Myers, and the other folks in the simulation enterprise, we were able to deliver many of our pilots still on schedule. That included some collaborative simulations with the College of Nursing with regard to mental health interviews. 
We also were able to deliver breaking bad news to over 80 clinical groups going through that simulation. We did our Unity Clinic simulations online, and now we are transitioning to how we can continue to deliver our LGBTQ training and our intellectual and developmental disabilities training, all virtually using Zoom. Then our clinical enterprise. We were really sure that this is where we would not be able to get students back in, but College of Medicine really took leadership here and was able to get approval for our students to return back to the clinical environment. And that allowed us to bring our teams back to Good Shepherd Clinic, our community partner. And with the use of telehealth equipment in the picture here, you see one of our carts, we were able to bring the teams back to the facility. And what our benefit out of all of this is that we were able to expand further than we ever dreamed. This included uh, expanding uh, enrollment to students at other campuses, including Tulsa, Norman, and outside of the Oklahoma City area. We were also able to better utilize our attendings. And so our medical facilitators were able to be anywhere and connect to the patient and to our student teams to increase the number of patients we were actually able to see. And so it allowed us to deliver more programming to more students and impact more patients using this model. So never waste a pandemic, but this really opened opportunities that we otherwise would not have explored. I'm going to transfer it over to Dr. Del Bratzler to talk a little bit about what we've currently been doing with vaccine clinics. Thank you, Margaret. So it's been a remarkable experience going through the entire pandemic, uh, but one of the real strengths of this particular campus is the uh, the diversity of, of health professionals that we have on our campus that have allowed to pull uh, so many things off during the pandemic. And one of the great examples is our vaccine clinics. So <clears throat> our, our students in nursing and our students in pharmacy were routinely trained in, the, in uh, giving IM injections and vaccines, uh, but students in dentistry, the PA program in, in uh, the medical school, uh, didn't necessarily routinely get that training. So we decided that we needed a lot of help to, to deliver vaccines starting in mid-December when vaccines came to the market to start giving, to slow this pandemic and really to tar start uh, uh, looking towards the end of the pandemic. So we trained more than 300 students in how to give intramuscular injections. And we, we had them do online training on the three different vaccines that the CDC is providing. We had them take training on safe injection practices, and then we brought them to the simulation center where they worked with uh, faculty uh, that came in, volunteered their time to teach the students how to give IM injections, how to draw up doses of vaccine uh, correctly, needle safety and other things that are so very, very important. And it's been remarkable. There have been more than a thousand volunteer slots that have been open to actually give doses of vaccine to many, many different uh, patients. Uh, we've had more than 5,000 volunteer hours just of our students from all of the disciplines on campus, even if they're not giving the vaccines. They've come together to run the administrative roles, the, the wayfinding, to help register patients for their vaccine, to monitor them after they get their vaccine, and just to simply help answer questions. So the students have been absolutely instrumental in all of our efforts to give vaccine to the uh, community of people that have come to OU Health uh, to get the vaccines. And we've had many, many students, faculty, clinicians, and others that have volunteered their time to do so. So I think, you know, when you think about what's happened, uh, it's been a remarkable experience. I've had the opportunity to participate in all three of those events from the training that we did early to help the students be prepared to work at the call center for the state. Uh, we had to teach them about COVID-19 to make sure they understood so they could answer questions. Um, as Margaret pointed out, I've had the opportunity to participate in the clinical settings and watch this remarkable interaction of the students from multiple disciplines come in, the use of telehealth to actually deliver care to patients. And then in our vaccine clinics where we brought so many different students together um, to um, <coughs> deliver vaccines to the community at large. It's highlighted the very uh, fundamental um, uh, uh, 
uh, things that we we focus on in interprofessional education, those those um, uh, key concepts that include team communication, roles and responsibilities, understanding what their roles and responsibilities are, putting patients and populations at the center of care. You know, it's been absolutely remarkable watching the empathy, the humanism of the students delivering the vaccines, talking to the patients. It's been a remarkable experience, both for the students and for the people that have come to get vaccines from us. And then shared team accountability. I've been at clinics where we've had students run the clinic from end to end, from drawing the vaccine doses, registering the patients, giving the shots, doing the monitoring. Uh, it's been amazing to see all the students from all the different disciplines come together to deliver high quality care. It does exemplify uh, what we're considering around interprofessional education and interdisciplinary practice.